But how about market access? It's something we've talked yeah. about. And, uh, you know, because um, you have been studying, uh, you know, the rating agencies yeah. and also the whole conversation about Africa having its own rating agency. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, would you say that uh, the rating agencies, as in the Moody's, the S&Ps and the Fitch, have been biased towards us? The answer is yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, a professor's response. Okay, break it down. So we, together with a couple of colleagues, uh, Leah Pan at the University of Curtin, uh, Richard Junfour, also at Curtin University, and then Dennis Safwa, he's at Niagara University in Canada. We looked at the credit rating agencies and their impact on Africa. So basically, when we say credit ratings, we are looking at it's a letter grade, right? So if you are rated, for example, triple A, that's the best quality. The US used to be triple A rated. It's currently, I think, double A. Yeah. Now, if you are rated, for example, C, it means that your credit rating is not very good. It's just like the way we write exams. If you get an A, it's excellent. If you get a B, C, yeah. D, F, it's, it's poor, right? So that's how the credit ratings work. And those credit ratings are a judgment on your credit quality. So like I said earlier, if you're rated A, it means you're very good. If you're rated C or D, it means that your credit quality is poor. So basically, we use machine learning to predict credit ratings of countries across the world. We looked at 132 economies globally from 2000 to 2023. And what we sought to do was to find out if there's a bias against African countries. And this call or arguments of a guy bias against Afghan countries became very pronounced during COVID-19 and the Russia-Ukraine war. And there was a report from UNDP that stated that African countries could save $75 billion annually mm. if they received fair credit ratings. Okay. And that's, that's huge. $75 billion annually is a significant amount. So we thought that was an interesting question to investigate, to actually see if really these credit rating agencies are biased against us. So African governments have been arguing for a long time that our ratings do not reflect our risk, i.e. we are paying more in terms of interest costs than we should mm. because our credit rating ratings are actually worse than they should be. And then the credit rating agencies also argue that, no, your ratings are based on your level of risk, your political economy, your corruption, your infrastructure investments, etc. So they argue that they are not biased against us. So we use machine learning to investigate if there's a bias or not. And what we saw when we took the full sample, all countries in the world, when you look at the top 25 predictors of credit ratings, Africa was not there. Mm. And Africa should not be there because your region or geography, whether you are in Ghana, the US, Canada, Australia, or South Africa, your location should not have any predictive power in terms of explaining your, your ratings. Because it shouldn't matter. Okay. What should really matter, like our vice president said, is your fundamentals, your economic fundamentals. If your economy is strong, that should drive or push your ratings higher. If your economy is weak, that would reduce your credit ratings. Mm. So within the first 25 predictors, we didn't see Africa as a predictor. But then we decided to do something interesting, right? Because this sample included 132 countries across the world. But they had in there only 26 African countries. Yeah. So we decided to do a random sampling where we took 26 African countries, which were other African countries we had. And then we randomly selected 26 non-African countries so that you can match, you have a match. There's no underrepresentation of African countries or overrepresentation of non-African countries in a sample. So we took the 26 African countries and then randomly selected 26 non-African countries. Now, when we did that, something interesting came out. Mm -hmm. Now, Africa was the number three predictor of credit ratings. Okay. And that should not be the case, right? Why shouldn't that be the case? Because, as we mentioned earlier, whether you are in Ghana or Japan or US, Canada, Australia, what should really influence whether you can pay your debt or not is not your location. 
Okay. It's rather your the quality of your economic policies, the consistency. So, so are these ratings biased against us? So again, I'll give you my answer. Yes, I know. <laughs> no, but, so, but based on based on the data, uh, based on the data, is there the need? Is there a justification for an African ratings agency? So let me talk about whether there's a bias or not. Okay. Because when I presented my paper at the University of Ghana uh, intercollege lectures, one of my very good friends, Senor Hussi, was there, and he said earlier, "Are you really sure that there's a negative bias against African countries?" I said, well, that's what the data said. But then I went back and did a finer investigation. So I looked at each credit class to see whether we had a bias or not. Now, what emerges is quite interesting. So when you are in the lower credit quality class, right, mm -hmm. they have actually been more good to us than they should be. Mm -hmm. There's a positive bias. Okay. So if our rating should have been D, they're actually rating us, for example, as C. Okay. Which means they're actually being positive, right? And again, you can see the, that from the way our credit quality deteriorated very quickly. Within a space of two years, we're in selective default. Yeah. Okay. So they have actually been more positive than they should when your credit rating is actually bad or you're in the low credit rating category. On the other hand, when your credit quality is actually very high, they are not giving us the credit we deserve. So countries that should be rated, for example, A, are being rated B. Oh. So in the upper credit quality class, there's a negative bias. Okay. But in the lower credit quality class, where Ghana is, they're actually being good to us. There's a positive bias there. Oh. Okay. But, but, but of course, once you get into the lower class, you know, you want to be careful because if you <laughs> get to default status, there's a lot of pressure exactly. on the economy. Yeah. So you can, But also up there, it should be helping... <clears throat> To actually get better but this is it this is it for me so is there a justification mm -hmm. for an african credit rating agency so this is how i see it whether there's a bias or not positive or negative i think that having an african credit rating agency or a ghanaian credit rating agency actually helps mm. right it helps to develop our local financial sector because currently very few obligates or borrowers in Ghana are rated, right? And one of the reasons is that the credit ratings are actually very expensive. Yeah. So a lot of companies in Ghana, most of Africa, are not rated. So if we had an African or a Ghanaian credit rating agency, that was quite affordable. That makes it easier for companies to have market access, to be able to issue debt and to borrow and to grow their companies. Yeah. So I think that it's not about whether there's a bias or not. That is an important conversation. If there's a bias negatively against you, it means that investors will sell your bonds. When they sell your bonds, your bond prices will fall. When your bond prices fall, your yield or interest rate will increase, so borrowing costs becomes more expensive. Investors begin to flee your country. So we call it capital flight. They begin to sell their investments, leave your country. That causes your currency to depreciate. Once your currency is depreciating, it can lead to a banking crisis, like we saw in Ghana, and a full-blown economic crisis. So that conversation is important. Like the UNDP estimated, if there's a negative bias, it can cost us about $75 billion annually. Mm -hmm. But I think that beyond that, we should look at having more entities rated and giving these companies the ability to actually borrow. And it's not just about companies. The vice president mentioned credit scoring. It's the same system, right? Using machine learning, we can predict what the credit score of Ebora should be, and that will allow Ghanaians to actually be able to borrow and invest. Mm.